Excellency, today, 26th March 2018, is a historic day for the people of Aceh. Over 100 Achenese diaspora in Europe have gathered here in the city of peace, The Hague, to commemorate the 145th anniversary of the Dutch declaration of war against the sovereign independent state of Aceh. That was 26th March 1873. Situated in the most northern part of the island Sumatra, Aceh was once the center of a powerful empire for several centuries and has a long and impressive history of resistance to outside domination. For hundreds of years before the arrival of the European powers to Southeast Asia, and for many centuries thereafter, Aceh remained an international recognized independent sovereign state, having diplomatic relations with countries of the world. 145 years ago today, the Kingdom of the Netherlands officially declared war against the sovereign state of Aceh and on the same day invaded our country. That war lasted almost a century, as Harper's Magazine had called 100-year war of today, one of the bloodiest and the longest colonial war in human history. The Dutch histor historian Paul van Ver made this conclusion in his book The Aceh War. Holland has never fought a war greater than one with Aceh. In terms of time, this war can be said to be the 80 years war. In terms of casualties, more than 100,000 dead. It was a military event that has no equal in the history of our land. The war against Aceh was for Holland, very much more than a mere armed conflict. It was, for a century, the burning point of our national, colonial and international politics. On 27 December 1949, the Dutch colonial regime that has neither the jury nor the facto power of Aceh illegally transfer its non-existent sovereignty over Aceh to the newly fabricated Indonesia without any consultation with the people of Aceh. This illegal transfer of sovereignty by one colonial power to another, namely Indonesia, is flagrant violation of the principles of the decolonization procedures of the United Nations which stipulated that sovereignty of a colonial territory is not transferable by the colonialist power to other colonialist powers. UN Resolution 1514 XV. In this case, the Netherlands must return Aceh to the Achenese, the rightful owner, not to Indonesia. For almost three decades, Aceh has become a killing field for the Indonesian armed forces. Agri. Between 1989 to 1998, Aceh was then declared as a military operational area and ruled by the reign of terror. The atrocities perpetrated through these years have no equal in the history of Aceh fighting against any colonial powers in the past. Crimes against humanity, such as arbitrary arrests, extrajudicial killings, routine torture and disappearances of thousands of civilians have become commonplace. An estimation of over 30,000 civilians lost their lives in military custody, in hidden mass graves or in secret concentration camps. These military operations continued unabated with, some, with the same intensity and brutality. Martial law was then imposed between May 2003 and May 2004, and another reign of terror was again in process until Aceh was devastated by the Indian Ocean tsunami on the Boxing Day of 2004. This natural disaster coupled with a prolonged war had brought the warring parties, the Republic of Indonesia and the Free Aceh Movement, signed a peace deal known as Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, in Helsinki, Finland. One of the many provisions in the MOU is the establishment of two human rights institutions, Human Rights Court, HRC, and Trust Reconciliation Commission, TRC. Nineteen years later, since the lifting of VOM, and eighteen years after the 1999 massacres, not a single perpetrator of these flagrant violations of human rights against innocent Achenes has been brought to justice, signaling that such violations are allowed to be violated in Aceh with impunity. Almost 13 years after Helsinki Accord signed, nothing has changed with regard to protecting of human rights and resolving the past abuses by military. 
The Regional House of Representatives enacted a bylaw with regard to TRC on 31st December 2013. But Human Rights Watch stated that the violations in Aceh were too serious to be addressed only by the Truth Commission, which cannot impose criminal penalties. States have an obligation under international law to prosecute serious abuses of human rights and war crimes. Former Asia Director at Human Rights Watch, Brad Adams, pointed out in May report 2006 that the military leaders who committed crimes in Aceh have been rewarded, not punished. The international community has pursued justice for past abuses in East Timor, as well as in Rwanda, Sierra Leone, and the former Yugoslavia. Why should Aceh be treated any differently, you wonder? It is obvious that the abuses perpetrated by the security forces during the conflict fall into the category of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. They are considered as serious violations committed as part of a large-scale attack against any civilian population and listed in the Rome Statute such as murder, rape, imprisonment, and forced disappearances, torture, etc. ASNLF, therefore, appealed to your organization, the International Criminal Court, to independently examine the incidents of vi violence and accountability for massacres, genocide, and war crimes, war crimes perpetrated by the state, in this case, the security forces of Indonesia. Act in accordance with your mandates, meaning that it is incumbent for your, your organization to react when states, such as Indonesia, are obviously unable or unwilling to prosecute the perpetrators of all these crimes against Achenese uh, civilians. And finally, bring all Indonesian war criminals to the hate and try for, for their crimes against humanity, as you have justly done to those in Rwanda, former Yugoslavia, Liberia, etc. Thank you for your attention.